Alright, good to go? Alright. Hello everybody. Uh, I'm Yair Yair Silvermans, and this is Fun with WebSockets, using Socket Puppet. Um, I'm Yair Silvermans, also known as Mr. Glass. Uh, I work as a web developer, please don't hate me. Uh, also a freelance hacker and large geek. Uh, I work at a company doing mostly PHP backend dev in New York. Uh, so, WebSockets were created to solve a problem, and that being dynamic web apps. There's a lot of things that need kind of real-time communication. Uh, IM is the biggest example, like GChat. Live blogs, you know, like Gadget and all those places covering Apple launches. They need live, they want to push out as fast as possible. Uh, collaborative apps, you know, docs or whatever. All these things need very fast, real-time communication so that everything stays the same. Um, so, up until recently, up until HTML5, people, everybody used Ajax, which kind of sucks. Uh, it requires you basically make an HTTP request uh, and send it off to the server, the server sends a response, uh, and that works great for just pulling information, but when you want real time, you have to pull constantly and do this all. Um, their HTTP requests in the browser are very annoying to work with in general, unless you use a library. Um, they have a lot of overhead, if you have to have a full HTTP packet, um, and they're latent because you're polling, so you're sending out a message every X seconds, however much you want to have them pinging you. Um, and instead of having real-time communication, they're basically polling every X seconds, uh, and so there's a lot of latency built into that. Uh, about 10 years ago, maybe 15, I don't know, somebody came along with this idea of long polling, which is how GChat actually works. Uh, so instead of your standard send a request, get a response immediately that might say, no, you don't have a message, Long polling works by uh, special server-side software that doesn't send a response right away. So they'll delay for whatever the TTL is, probably about five seconds usually. Um, and if you get a response in the meantime, if they get a message for you in the middle of that delay, they'll send right away, oh, you got an IM. Otherwise, at the end of the response time, they'll send an OK back, and you will poll again. So instead of having to const poll every second, you can poll every five seconds, and the server can send a message when it has one. But they're very tricky to implement. Uh, there's special server-side software, there's a couple different implementations. Um, terrible hack that relies on you know, not sending response back right away, which is always expected. Uh, and still has some latency. Uh, if you've ever had GChat trying to like, sit there for a minute, Facebook chat is terrible, this is this. Uh, and has all the HTTP overhead as well. So, you know, don't really gain much over Ajax. It's, it's faster than Ajax, but it's not a great solution. Um, this is a comparison chart of, for the overhead between WebSockets and uh, Ajax. Uh, this is just straight up, they send small packets like a, a ping or something. Um, and they had 10,000, I think it was 10,000 cases. And the giant blue bar is if you use the standard Ajax, it's full HTTP request. And that little orange bar is the amount of bits you need if you use a WebSocket for the same message. So there's a huge overhead gain when you use WebSockets. Uh, and they kind of had to step up their testing to make it actually look like something real because you can't even see the size of the bars. So WebSockets are awesome. Uh, part of HTML5, they are not ratified yet. There's a working draft. Um, they stable for a little while. Uh, very simple to use. I don't know if any of you have actually done a uh, browser Ajax request native, um, but they're annoying. You have to have like every browser does it differently, and there's all sorts of handlers you need to do. Uh, WebSocket, you just declare a WebSocket, so you say var WebSocket equals new WebSocket, give your URL, um, and then you can just send a message using the send uh, function. Dead simple to use. Um, not very common yet. Uh, I was really hoping when I decided to do this that I would be able to find a lot more. This is all given from you. Um, but not many companies that are real actually use it yet. Uh, you'll see Hackathon stuff, but like Google and none of those places use it. Uh, it does have, as of the last time I checked, uh, about 70% of clients out in the wild are using it. Uh, all the modern clients have it, but just 70% of users support it. So you will be able to, it's, it's up there, it's ready, and companies are just about starting to use it. So, story time. About five months ago now, uh, I lost my job, and while I was going around interviewing in the startup scene in New York, uh, I was I heard about WebSockets, and a lot of people were interested in them. And 
I decided to play around with it. I made a stupid browser-based game. Uh, and I did real-time stuff with it, and it was fun. And then my game broke, and I tried to debug it. And there was nothing to debug it. I couldn't see the traffic. Uh, since I found a couple things that let me see the traffic, but I basically had no way to debug my code uh, in terms of seeing the actual traffic being passed. And that made me think, well, clearly I need to make a tool. So I made socket up. All problems with computer science can be solved by another level of indirection. Uh, it's a quote from David Wheeler. He had the first PhD in computer science. Um, and it pretty much holds true. So what I did is I added a layer of indirection inside the browser. Uh, it's Socket Puppet is a Chrome extension, and it overrides the native WebSocket API in Chrome. Um, it just kind of sits on top, and we'll get to how that works in a bit. Uh, passes the information into DevTools, uh, so you can use it, control it, etc. cetera. Uh, and I have features for logging, sending messages, tampering with stuff. We'll get to that. So this is a diagram made in a recognized format. Uh, kind of explains how it works. Uh, your typical web browser on the left is the web page, talks to WebSocket API, goes and talks to the service. And then if you have Socket Puppet, this is just dead simple. You can web page talks to Socket Puppet instead of the, instead of the WebSocket API. And you can do every one in there. And then you go over to the to WebSocket API, which actually sends it. So I'm still using Chrome's WebSocket API. I just sit in the middle. So here's how you can do this for yourself if you want to override a different API. Um, this is very basic, um, but you need, if you have an extension, there's something called content scripts. They run at the initiation of the page, um, but your sandbox, you're in a different DOM than the page. So if you try to, if you have arbitrary JavaScript running, it won't actually run in the pages environment. But you can inject code. So what you do is you open and you grab your script, you, you know, which just, uh, you create the element, the JavaScript element, just the thing for the DOM. You pipe your uh, actual JS that you want it to be in there into that element source. And then you uh, append it into the head of the document. Uh, there is a tiny little race condition at the start of when the page emits. Uh, if they have a, a, a raw JavaScript script block in the top, it may or may not happen first. Uh, but standard for web development is to have it at the bottom. All JavaScript happen at the bottom and after the full DOM loads. So I've never seen it actually uh, affect anything in a real site. So you can put whatever you want into a page with this. Um, you can do whatever you want. So if you want, you can override the alert function and get rid of some of the alert messages. This is, again, very simple. Simple code, but a great example of what this does. Uh, and yeah, you just alert equals function alert message. So you're declaring a new function and just overriding the standard alert function. And instead of alert popping up box L, it'll just log into your console. So when you override one of these APIs, you need to be careful. You need to override the entire interface because all these websites they use all the elements of the API. And WebSocket API has a lot of stuff in it. So I read a lot of docs, WPC has a lot of docs. Then I found out that Chrome doesn't use the working draft. So I went back and read even more bigger docs. Um, I found out that you need constants for WebSocket API, but you can't do constants in JavaScript, so you have to think of them. There's a lot of little things like that that you have to kind of get around. Um, but now I own all the sites. So I can log all the data, I can listen for events, I, I can do whatever I want. So I don't know if anyone wants to see me override alert, I think you guys all know how to do that. Um, but you all can use Socket Puppet, it's available now, socketpuppet.nmclass.org. Uh, very dead simple to use. Uh, open up DevTools, um, click on the Socket Puppet tab, that will kind of insert everything, set everything up. Go to your web page, uh, and then you can view transmission logs so you can see the data being sent back and forth, save transmission logs, send arbitrary messages. And I'm going to try to demo this if we have internet. Let us see. So here I have websocket.org's lovely echo test, uh, which is fabulous. You send it a message, it sends a response. 
So you can see I now in Dev Tools because I installed Socket Puppet have this uh, Socket Puppet uh, tab. I can refresh. And that will make sure. Sometimes it should connect, but just in case, I like to refresh. Um, we can actually tell it to use a secure socket because it doesn't matter to Socket Puppet, so we're going to use SSL. Uh, we're going to connect. Uh, so you can see it log. We have a new web socket open. Uh, the echo test sends this lovely little message rocket with HTML5 web socket. And just pings back that whatever you've sent it. Um, so I can go in using Socket Puppet and send an arbitrary message like, hello. Um, and you can see in the response, the JavaScript code, that box on the right is uh, all populated by the JavaScript code in the page. So I saw when I clicked the send button, it sent that message. But when I sent from Socket Puppet, that happened outside the browser knowing. So it received the hello response, and it shows it there. But it doesn't know I sent it. So you can send an arbitrary message. Uh, if you did a bunch of stuff, a lot of, this is a dead symbol, a lot of real-time applications will have a lot of data coming in, and you probably want to save it and look at it in a thing, so you can click the button, it gives you a text file, nice and easy. There's a clear button that just clears out that log. Uh, that's a very basic setup, but that was, that let me fix my site, uh, and that is 90% of what you need. Um, add in a regex statement and it will fill it out and replace it with whatever you want. Uh, you can do that live so you can kind of replace stuff ongoing. Um, oh, and I forgot to show you another feature. So I'll go over that now. So back here, I actually forgot to show you guys. Um, you can actually have it in pop up <coughs> and alert to drop every message sent from the browser. So you can go in and send and it'll just ask you what you want to go. Can enter it'll send the same message, you can change it, so it's so hacked, whatever. Um, it's very annoying because every time it sends a message, it'll pop up. Um, so again, if you have a real-time chat app, that might get really annoying fast. Um, but pretty cool. Uh, then for the uh, filters, so you can go in here, and I know they always say Rocket HTML5 web socket, so I'm gonna copy that. I can say, I want to switch that. So I want to, every time it says that, I'm going to say, hack it with socket puppet. Cool. And now there's a little filter. You can see it there. It's listed. Cool. Um, every time I send the message, you can see in the log, page asks to send rock with HTML5 socket puppet, web socket, but we send hack it with socket puppet. So we automatically filter that out and replace it. So if you have a web page and you want to just automatically change something on the fly, you can do that. Uh, it fully supports regex, just there's JavaScript uh, regex replacement, so. Uh, oh, great. You may not be able to do full screen anymore. Fun. So, um, you can, if you want to, if you know JavaScript, you can fork this. This is up on GitHub. You can get the source. You can install an unpacked extension. There's guides on the website. It's very easy to do. And if you edit devtooltab.js, you can add in your own logic to do whatever you want. Um, please share if you add something cool uh, that's generalized. Uh, my boss at work actually wants to fork it and make it specific to different websites he uses versions. So you know you can make a version just for such and such game that will just hack the game and make you, you know, infinite life or something. Um, and you can do that. It's very easy to do. It's there. You know, there are functions for every time you receive a message, every time you send a message, etc., and you can oh, you can pretty much play with everything in there. So we're up to, wow, well, we're running early. Uh, we're up to the big demo, uh, which may or may not work. So let's try this. Open up DevTools. Here with a phone. Who has a phone with a uh, barcode scanner? Anybody have a phone with a barcode scanner? 
You got it? Can you scan the parking? So this is a game called Duck Shoot. This is a Chrome web experiment. Um, what it does is when you scan the QR code, it connects your phone. Let me get off my phone. Um, it connects to your phone, and you use the phone to control the game. And you and they will have the game displayed on the on the screen, and you use your phone to control the game. Um, Chrome they like to do these with Chrome to show all the cool HTML5 stuff. So it uses web sockets, it uses Canvas, it uses a bunch of other things. Yeah, it's going to ask you to enter in a name, just put in whatever. Um, so when the phone connects, we should get a message back that it picked up a phone and that we'll see it in the log and we'll see the game going. Is it not connecting? Is the browser not opening? Oh, there it goes. It, it's crawling along. What's the phone show? Oh, there, loading. Cool. All right, so you can see it says QR code scanned, and it's actually going to wait like this in the game uh, for her to enter in a name, because they want a name for the leaderboard. Um, so uh, go ahead and just flick up on the screen. That's how you shoot things. Cool, you hit a duck. Good job. So you can see that you have the score going through in there. We're receiving messages with the logic of what the swipe direction and stuff is. Um, and we are responding with whether they hit or not what the score is. Um, and I saw this when I was looking through, and I went, oh, that should be easy to hack. So you can go in, and you can add in just a regex replacement. Score equals plus, so I'm just going to re replace any number after score with score quote nine 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 nine. And now swipe in. Um, the game's almost over. So you can see that she hit something and it just always sends out score nine 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 and it says game over. Your score is nine nine nine. So uh, we can change the score. Unfortunately if I scroll down on the page you'll see um, I tested this like a month, month and a half ago and I did look at the leaderboard before I tested it and I did it a really big number and I've never seen the leaderboard work. So I don't know if I broke it. <laughs> I don't know if the hack actually works, um, but I know I sent them a different score. So yeah, that's the best I got. Uh, I really tried to find cooler demos. Uh, unfortunately, not many people are using it. Uh, you'll actually find a lot of cool like HTML5 web demo, local issues, web sockets, and when you start using socket public, you'll see that most of them are faking. Um, a lot of the libraries out there will just, uh, they'll fall back. And the older libraries, so they're built to fall back if you don't have a WebSocket. And the older versions will just always fall back for some reason. So you see a lot of the early demos will just fall back. Um, there's one, uh, WebSocket Eric actually has a promotional page where they try to sell you it. And they, oh, somebody scanned a QR code. Um, so they have a promotional page and they will, um, And they have a brochure page, and it's like all this, and it has like a bunch of stuff popping up. There's a stock ticker, there's a this, there's a that, it's a bunch of headlines and stuff. And I looked at the WebSocket information. They're like, this is all WebSockets, WebSockets are beautiful. It sends one letter over a WebSocket, and does an AJAX request, and then all the data is fake. And it's also static data, doesn't change. So uh, there's a lot of stuff like that. Ah, you lost your AJAX connection, I think. So, You'll see a lot of stuff like that. The biggest example of somebody actually using it that I've seen is Stack Overflow. Stack Overflow does the, uh, the little pop-ups that say you have a new answer. Those are, I think, done over it, but they just send a like, yes or no pin out. Uh, but they, they have a WebSocket running and you can see it. There's not, it's like a letter going over it, so nothing too cool to look at. Uh, so that's the big demo. Um, Is it going to work? Awesome. So, some ideas for the future. Um, when you browse around, it's kind of invisible when there's a WebSocket as opposed to Ajax. So I really kind of want to have some pop-up or something that shows that you've connected to a WebSocket. 
I toyed around with having a big button at the top that would glow when there was a WebSocket Live, but what I found was that you can't open DevTools uh, from any button. You need, to, you need to initiate it. The user has to initiate it. You can't have a button that does it. You can't have anything. So that got scrapped, and I'm not sure how to do it. Um, I kind of want to add fuzzing so you can kind of just open up, have a WebSocket connection, hit a button, and it sends a bunch of random stuff. But I've never done fuzzing before, so maybe somebody else can add that. Um, unfortunately, right now there are a couple limitations. Uh, we, I did not code it to accommodate multiple sockets on one web page. Um, I just didn't think about it at first. Uh, it's going to take a little bit of architectural change to uh, handle that. Uh, it's mostly due to how the Chrome sandboxing works. I didn't get into this, but everything in Chrome is sandboxed, and you actually can't talk to the page from the uh, DevTools panel. Um, so what you need to do is have the page talk to a back to a content script, and the, so the page is only allowed to talk to the content script, and then the content script is allowed to talk to a background page, which is all the, across all your tabs, and then the background page is allowed to talk to dev tools. None of those are allowed to talk to each other except for that chain. So if you look at the code, you'll see a lot of message passing back and forth, um, and so I have to kind of keep track, and I keep track of the tab, but I did not think to keep track of which socket so it would message just for as well. Um, also, if there's an iframe in the page, uh, I'm just injecting into the DOM of the web page that loads. So if the iframe loads, it's a different DOM. So I can't really get that. Uh, I'm thinking about ways to inject into an iframe, but I haven't done anything yet. Um, and the filter is very, very basic. Uh, I threw it together about two and a half, three weeks ago. So uh, I want to make it better, I'm not sure how but it's there. Um, so yeah, that's some of my ideas for the future. I'd love to hear more. I'd love to see people. Um, uh, yes? Oh, go ahead. I'm just oh. waiting. Okay. Um, I'd love to see people fork it and, and put in stuff. Uh, it's very basic JavaScript. Uh, you should be able to. So you can grab it. Please, please, please contribute. Uh, even if it's just opening up an issue, if you have a problem on a web page. Um, I have students around and stuff. My, my coworkers have been playing with this all week. And they've sent me a couple websites that don't work. Usually it's multiple websites on the page. Uh, thanks, greets to my wife, Rebel Spam, Weasel, Shepard, Betamax, and everybody at Peace Dental Feed. Thanks so much for running this thing. Um, and questions? Okay, um, can you manipulate headers with it? Uh, what? Uh, headers, to uh, communicate back to the server? Um, no, I'm, I'm not even sure that there are headers in the WebSocket protocol. I, I haven't actually looked at the actual low-level protocol because I was dealing with just the, uh, the, the interface in the browser. Everything I do is in the browser. So, it, but is there any caveats on what servers are required to support this, like in the server version? Or? No, I mean, you need, so WebSocket is a new protocol. It is not related, it's not really related to HTTP. Um, and you just need, there's a lot of server software out there to support it. There's pretty much in every language. If there's a WebSocket thing available, JavaScript, Node.js, very popular JavaScript uh, for connecting to WebSockets. There's PHP versions, I've seen Python versions, I think I've seen Ruby versions. Um, and it's, it's pretty simple to set up, but I'm not even sure there are headers with each message. There's, you know, a whole, there's, a, there's something in the initial setup, but everything I researched, everything I did, was about inside the browser, so the API and, and mucking with that. And, and it's different than most of the stuff I've seen at cons and all the tools. Uh, and you, can, you have to interact with it very differently than you do with a lot of the other stuff. Um, and just by its nature of being in the browser, I get by SSH and things like that. So did you, um, you said with your chain, are you able to interact, uh, so you're not able to interact directly with the web page that it's embedded in? Can you pull any resources like credentials or other stuff related to a session on that site? Um, so just in general in Chrome extensions, that's a limitation. Um, if you wanted to, and I know there are viruses that do this. There, there are pieces of malware that will install an extension. Um, actually, that's why uh, about a year ago, I think, Google added a feature in Chrome where if an uh, extension is installed from outside of Chrome, it's off by default and you get a little pop-up saying something was installed and you should look and see if it's a virus. So um, you can, you can, as I showed, you can inject into the DOM of the page. And when you inject the DOM of the page, you can definitely, if there's a password field in there, you can grab the content of that password field. There are plenty of viruses that do that. Uh, and then passing it back is 
not incredibly hard, then there's an API in Google for just passing to another area of the DOM, you know, they have these sandbox DOMs. So that API lets you pass to a different area of the DOM, but you're only allowed from one area to access a certain level of area. Um, so you're only allowed to talk to the content script from the web page. And you're only allowed to talk to the background page from the content script or the dev tools, things like that. Um, the limitation in message passing is it needs to be, uh, I think it gets uh, parsed as JSON. You cannot send an actual real JavaScript object. It needs to be able to be serialized. Uh, can you push down updates to your regular expression uh, filters from the page that you're uh, connecting, or from the WebSocket interface? Um, you're saying from me? Uh, we, as far as your plugin, can you My, push down updates? Uh, like if you want to have something update as it's running, can you um, update the filters? So if you wanted to change the filters while it's running, unfortunately I did not. That, like I said, that's like the last thing I made. It's kind of, <laughs> Janky interface. Does it seem reasonable to you you could implement something like that, adding, say, a, uh, another socket to it that would pull for regex from a, a third uh, party or a third party site once that person had connected? I mean, like what the WebSocket is they're using? I don't know about a third party site. Maybe you could certainly do that. That seems like a lot. I mean, you could, you could, if you were malicious, you could kind of have it check and see what you wanted to do with the inner server and get data. Um, I do want to add stuff so you can mo modify these regex statements. I just haven't gotten around to it. Uh, any other questions? Um, so Firebug, uh, I'm not familiar with Firebug. I'm a bit familiar with Firefox extensions itself. Uh, those are all written, I think, in C. Or I looked into Firefox initially because I actually use Firefox mostly for my web dev. So Firefox, you can't code in JS. You have to code in C. And uh, while I have done that in the past, I decided it was annoying to do. Um, this was far easier to do in Chrome. So you could certainly do the same thing, but the code is not at all compatible. Uh, any other questions? Yeah, I have a question. Okay, I guess. Yeah.